Super Mums. Uh, this is our live webinar in March. Keep getting very confused about what month it is because I, as a planner organizational freak, am um, months ahead of myself. So I'm looking at things in May and December at the moment. Um, so no, it is March, it's okay. And this month is all about calm and relax. So I'm gonna hand over straight over to our expert because she's got a lot of good stuff to say. So I'm gonna let you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about who you are and um, what we expect from this evening. Looking forward to it. Great, thank you so much, Jessica. Hi, everybody. Well, I'm Dipti. My name is Dipti. I'm a hypnotherapist, and I have two children myself. Uh, they're not they're not little anymore. They are now teenagers. Uh, so I feel like I have some some good sort of you know. Um, sort of reasons to be here because I felt like I've I've been there with my children were basically only a year apart they still are a year apart in fact <laughs> they were only a year apart so it felt like I had twins but not really if that makes sense so um, when they were tiny and little my ex-husband at the time he uh, was a night shift worker so that caused a lot of challenges in itself anyway because when he was home from work he had to sleep and I had to get out the house and the house had to be kind of all nice and calm so I literally had to learn how to how to facilitate a calm house from newborn so I didn't want to be a stress head either, so I had to kind of recognize uh, how to be relaxed within it. So it wasn't trying to sort of, you know, it wasn't like a you know, appear calm out, you know, out here, but inside you're just like losing the plot. It, so I had to sort of maintain that authenticity. So that's kind of where I come from. Uh, and then later on, as the, the boys grew up, I became a hypnotherapist. And so I've been able to incorporate some of those skills and ideas as well. So I'm going to share them all with you today. So I genuinely believe that a calm mind creates a relaxed home. So our mind creates a relaxed environment. You know this anyway, wherever you are. So if you are with people who are a little bit stressed out, a little bit kind of irritated, angry, then of course that creates an environment that is sort of, you know, tense and not so great. So really what we want to be able to figure out for ourselves is how do we actually get that calm mind? And then therefore this this level of of kind of um, stillness and awareness will will sort of filter out and ripple out into your environment. So it doesn't have to be a home; it could just be anywhere you are, really. And as we all know, a calm mummy creates a calm child. <laughs> so, of course, calm daddies create calm children as well. Um, but there's that old adage, that old saying: if mummy's happy, everyone's happy. So, you know, this is what <laughs> this is what I'm really passionate about. You know, helping people sort of create that genuine, authentic kind of calm and happiness. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, and hopefully. Um, uh, we will get to the point of the end where we can do a, a deep relaxation demo so you can experience it because you know it's quite a lot of the time people say to me well it's all right for you to say your kids are teenagers now you've got loads of time in your hands you know um you know you don't have a little four-year-old pulling on your your skirt and you know you don't have a three-year-old coming into the toilet with you and you know all of this but i did i did and so I have been there, uh, and so I, I, I just want to be able to teach what I did. So hopefully that's, you know, something that you can take away with you today. And of course, if you do have questions, then, you know, let me know, or let Jessica know, and I will happily incorporate them. Yeah, Good. So into the chat, so... Um, it's a bit more obvious if you're on your phone and watching, but if you're watching live and you're on the computer sort of bottom 
around here-ish. <laughs> there should be a little thing that says chat and you can click on there and pop any messages in there, but we'll, we'll check them at the end um, as opposed to as we go through. So if you make it quite obvious, if you're referring to a bit that you've mentioned, make it quite obvious in the question and we'll come back to those. Okay, lovely. All right, so what I would like to start off with really is a question. Um, let me just... Ah, oh, no, no, I don't want to start off with that. I want to start off with this common reason list because I work with a lot of, of mums, um, not just new mums, but also mums who have been, mums who have also left, had their children leave the nest. So people from newborn to empty nest syndromes. Um, and I've been doing a lot of work with watching and observing and, and kind of noticing the excuses they might make for why they don't feel they can relax or why they don't feel that they have the ability to remain calm and this is the list that comes up time and time again so let me just go through this list uh, people think they don't have time to relax or they can't relax or they can't be calm one, because they have kids. You know, that is just, <laughs> that will be what I hear all the time. Well, you know, I can't relax. I've got children. Okay, so I'm going to break this down in a minute. The next one is, I feel guilty if I put myself first. Guilt is a massive, massive one. I don't have the time. So clearly, you know, that's, that's an issue. Um, there's not enough hours in the day. Again, linking to time and, you know, um, trying to squeeze too much in uh, I've always got too much to do so therefore they they feel that anything to do with them perhaps you know can't come can't feature and factor so therefore they go down in the priority list there I don't want to be selfish now this is one I hear all the time I don't want to be selfish we'll go into that soon as well uh, I don't have any help or I don't want any help so it's this kind of bodhisattva approach to living you know it's like well I need to be a super mum literally and therefore that means I'm going to do it all myself um the links to the number eight, I do everything on my own. You know, I've always done this. It's always been the case, so I don't have to change. Uh, juggling too many balls, again, is a priorities issue. So these are the, the excuses I hear coming up time and time again. And so I'm going to just be breaking them down. And they, they do kind of fall into a couple of categories, really. And it's lack of time or lack of self-worth. Um, and so I'll be talking about those two things in a minute um, we'll also be talking about the word selfish because I find that a really really interesting word for some people that could be a very big trigger word for um, you know things they've learned from the past from their, their own parents uh, from anywhere really what you know what is your relationship with your work with the word selfish and that's an interesting question okay so because I like people to have an experience for themselves, uh, what I, I like to do, rather than tell people what to do, I like to ask questions. So this might be a good thing for you to uh, use a notepad for. So it would just be me asking you the question and you just kind of noting down, you know, whatever comes to you, any thoughts, any, any kind of issues. So the first question, is what will being relaxed do for you so I'm really interested in knowing how being relaxed will enhance your life or improve your life you know what sort of things will be better if you were able to actually relax so just kind of notice what comes up for you. Don't worry about whether you think you can or whether you think you've got time or whether you think you deserve it. Don't worry about any of that stuff. But just imagine that you could have this skill of relaxation. What would actually that do for you? What would be the benefit? What would be the advantage? You know, how will you gain something positive from that? Um, also, not just for you, but also your family, perhaps your partner, uh, your own children. Um, 
and it doesn't even have to be in the home. It could be at work or wherever you are. So what is actually being relaxed going to do for you? So it'd be really good if you could just write those sort of things down just to sort of, you know, get a sense of that for you. Okay. So because so often you're saying you say you'll uh, what it doesn't necessarily what it might do for you or do for your family, but I'm always a big believer in if it's yeah, like we said, if it's helping mama, every everyone benefits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah, I mean it really does come down to that because we we do have a major influence, you know, in our dynamic in the family. And I mean, that's a good thing, really, because in a way, if we've got that much influence, we can actually influence in a positive way. Mm-hmm. So if negative influence is happening at the moment, we can learn skills and learn tools and actually reverse it you know and so then it will have a positive ripple effect out rather than a negative one so if so it's a bit like knowing that if I can do the changing this will actually make a difference we're not expecting somebody else to change you know and that's really powerful good ready to go on to the next question okay so similar but just a little bit different. So what will being calm do for you? So why is calm a good thing? Why will calm be beneficial? What will you notice if you are calm and if everybody around you is calm? Why is it good if your kids are calm? So what will being calm do for you what about your relationship if that has an element of beautiful calm within it why will that be useful why will that be healthy why will that be positive not many people come up with negatives from these (laughs) questions I've never actually known that you know people haven't said you know what oh my god if I'm going to be relaxed that's going to be really really annoying or you know it it doesn't work like that does it so no one ever comes in and goes I'm you know I'm really 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 too calm can you stress me out please you know it doesn't (laughs) that's never ever happened so really we're all looking for calm relaxation you know wherever we are aren't we that's really we That's said really our default. That we always wanted the kid to see us in a calm, and she's a very calm kid because of it. And well, mm. I think because of it is that she doesn't see us sweat. She at some point needs to understand that stress has happened and things like that, but not at yes. this age. Not at this age. And um, no, yeah. So if we're frazzled, we step away. And we had a word in the early what word, a phrase in the early days of I'd hit a wall. And he would come and take over. And obviously we had the massive benefit of that we both work for ourselves. We both work from home. Um, but the downside is he didn't get any paternity leave. So yes, he would go, have to go into his office and work. Mm. But I could turn around and go, I've, I've hit a wall. And sometimes that we usually just meant 10 minutes. It usually would be, I go and have a shower for 10 minutes, even if I'd already had one that day. It was just to go and do something else away and have that and literally hit my recharge button I think once I came back from where have I been I'd been out with her and he'd been at home for something it was a weekend day and I came home and I was just like I've really hit a wall and could you take her for the afternoon and he Mm. went put her down to bed and normally would have done a family afternoon um but he put, put her down to bed and and I just went off and I think I went and got the car cleaned and just so, yeah. for no purpose, but that's what I needed to be both calm and relaxed in that moment. Mm. And it wasn't that we'd had a particularly stressful morning or anything. I think it was, we'd possibly gone to church, which has toddler church at my church. So I can put her in toddler church and I uh, get to go back into the main, main service and things. Um, and it hadn't been particularly fraught. She hadn't been particularly upset, but I just had hit zero. And mm. was like, man, it's still going to end badly if I do <laughs> charge. <laughs> but that's really, really, really good that you were able to recognize that in yourself as well. And also not come up with, well, 
there's no reasons for this, so I'll just carry on anyway. You know, and the fact that your partner and you have this kind of code word <laughs> and or code sentence is really good because it means that you both understand that that is the code sentence for, right, if I don't do anything or respond to this, it's just going to get worse, you know? So it's a really good way of, of communicating as well. And, and I think that's, that's a really good message to, to your little girl. I didn't know her name. Sorry. Sorry. Felicity. And Felicity is going to be learning not from what you're saying quite often. It's from what you're doing is your actions, isn't it? Because as children, um, we hear words all the time. Um, most of the time, the words could be perhaps um, confusing or they might be um, they they might not be in line with what is actually happening so it's kind of like we're giving ourselves the, or, or the children might be seeing one thing and and hearing another thing and not really understanding because their cognition isn't mature enough so the words quite often uh, not as pa even though we know that the words are powerful, but they're watching. They're watching our actions. So action is so important um, because if you are able to to kind of match your words with your actions, that's the congruence there, and they they kind of learn that safety message as well. Yeah. Really, yeah. Good. So now our next question. This one's interesting. Okay, let's let the curtains flow. <laughs> right. You what will being tidy do for you? Now I don't know if you've watched or heard of the Marie Marie Kondo Netflix. Oh, have I? Oh. I teach the cluttering. Um, Perfect. I think the, oh, the show that's been out recently and yeah. But her original book is called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. And they missed the life-changing bit out of that show, as far as I'm concerned, which is all the mindset side of things, which is the mm -hmm. bit I teach. So that's a bonus. People couldn't learn it from the show, so then come and learn it from me. Um, exactly. <laughs> was it last September? We did a whole month on, on the word tidy. Um, I, I've got another Marie Kondo-based youtube video coming out fairly soon um because the, the the tv program came out but i did it in september everyone's been bringing out marie kondo themed videos and i'm like i've already done ours <laughs> you're like i'm that british version <laughs> yeah. exactly um, so yeah obsessed obsessed with the declutter i love a good declutter i just love her she's so cute she's something like four foot three or something she's like really oh tiny God. yeah and she's so sweet but you know it's not about being OCD is it it's not about being tidy just say so your mother-in-law you know for when your mother-in-law comes around it's about recognizing that actually when you invest some time because it does take time to you know start again if you need to and pull it all out and it can look a bit chaotic before it gets kind of better yeah. but if you invest that time then everything shifts as you know that decluttering on the outside is literally decluttering in your mind so when I have my hypnotherapy clients um, you know they'll come back from session from session one to session two and they'll say things like oh I did something really unusual I literally went in the loft and I tied it up up there you know and I'm just like Yes, because the loft is like the metaphor for your brain, you know. It's the place where you don't really see, see it all the time, uh, but it exists, yeah. you know. So your mind is a bit similar to that where, you know, you kind of, you know, your mental health is the, the unseen part of you, the thing that you can just kind of gloss over, you know. So actually by getting in the loft, a metaphorical loft in your brain, you're decluttering there so everything else feels better it's, so. it's funny i find the most stressful i call them uh, like minor stresses and they build up those little minor stresses are the cupboards and drawers that you don't see every day uh, probably partly because the things i see every day i i fix fairly quickly 
But um, yeah, the ones that I need to know that inside the cupboard, even though no one's seeing it, is organized because that's what's sort of the representation of what's inside me and ticking over. Um, but it's funny you should say about the, the loft thing when my mum passed away and my sister and I had to sort the loft out. Mm. There was just so many things and stuff and it felt very much like we were clearing out her metaphorical baggage from the yeah. um, sort of a few, t- few too many unfulfilled dreams and mm. holding on to past lives and past experiences and things like that, which a lot of it she didn't really want anymore. Um, and it was, once we got rid of it, the house, lit, even though it wasn't stuff we could see, the house felt so much lighter. Yes. This, this Interesting, this, isn't it? The energy, the energy clears. Yeah, even though the loft isn't at all visible or no one would know, but it's something, something shifts. It's almost like magic, isn't it? Yeah. Life-changing magic. Life-changing magic that sparks joy. <laughs> Um, and also people will talk about, you know, the, the, the kitchen drawer, everyone's got that kitchen drawer that they just like shove their whatever in key rings and anything that doesn't have a home basically goes into that kitchen drawer. Um, now if you know that actually everything can have a home in your life and in your world, then you won't ever have the need for that kitchen drawer. So that's the whole idea really is that giving everything a home and if it doesn't belong, it doesn't belong and it needs to go in the bin or somewhere else, you know, that isn't in your, your space. So the tidying is, is not just about your environment, but it is actually about your own mental state. And, you know, when you've got tidier thoughts you can think clearer you know you are more efficient you are more productive uh you you can kind of um have space for other things as well so tidying outside is a metaphor for (laughs) tidying inside really so you know it's about recognizing as well that okay fine if you feel overwhelmed and that you just don't know where to start brilliant jessica can help you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there's a book coming out i think it might have come out today somehow like the 19th of march is ringing about it's coming out some no no it was march 2019 okay so that's for the 19th so it's coming out it must be coming out later this month from gretchen rubin who is another lady i'm i'm just absolutely obsessed with she wrote the happiness project yeah before and she's just fantastic and she's bringing out a book called outer order in a calm nice i'm so excited for that book <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly it, isn't it? It's just, it is your representation of what's going on in your body, in your mind. Um, So I also, um, the other day I was listening to the radio and they were talking about this um, Navy SEAL. You've probably heard about this Navy SEAL who did this whole massive speech about waking up and making your bed first thing. Did you hear, have you heard of him? I heard about something similar, I believe. It might be the same one. Yeah, so he's basically, you know, you, he's just got this, I, uh, this idea that you wake up, you make your bed. As soon as you make your bed, you have already sort of said to yourself that I'm starting the day like this in this tidy fashion. And, and then that little bit of tidy kind of moves on to another bit of tidy. It doesn't met- necessarily mean you're just tidying up all day. It's just that you're doing things. <coughs> Excuse me. You're doing things in a, in a kind of more ordered and tidy fashion. So it does start with when you open your eyes, basically. It really, I mean, I can't expect my partner to get up as early as I do. I'm a 5 am Wow. I, and out of choice, my daughter doesn't get up that early. People are like, does she, does she wake you up? And I'm like, no, I get up then because I want to, because that's what fits with everything else that I want to do then after. Wow. Um, but it bugs me that so I you can't make your bed. <laughs> I'm my bed my partner's still in it. And um, so he he makes it with the bed folded, the sheet folded open to air, and then a couple of hours I'll come back and fold it and, and fold it back and and finish it off. But I do. I've just tweaked. I've been doing the Miracle Morning for a couple of months now, and nice. I just tweaked that to have a little bit of 
shuffling around the kitchen tidying up because yeah I, even if it's emptying the dishwasher or something you know I'm, I yeah. don't like doing it at the end of the night there's a big part of me that l would love to have the habit of tidying away everything at the end of the night and we wash up but there might be the glass or the cheese plate or something like that. We, we love cheese and crackers um, at sort of half past nine, literally just before we go into bed. So, okay. <laughs> so there might be like a couple of little bits like that that we'll deal with. Um, yeah. I'll deal with in the morning and I put an audio book on and have that little tidy and that little potter and it does set me up for the day. Really yeah. Nicely. It's interesting. My mum, bless her, she's not here anymore either. But my mum used to say, I can't even leave a teaspoon in the sink for the next day. And so that these are this is this is the other interesting thing. We get these messages coded in from our parents, don't we? Um, whether or not I took that in as a teenager. No, I definitely didn't take that in as a teenager. <laughs> definitely not. Uh, or as a student. Um, but it's something that I regularly hear in my own head now. So it's funny how, you know, um, well, negatives and positives can live in your mind. And, and you know, I, I won't leave a teaspoon in the sink either. And, yeah, and you have to be careful that it doesn't get into an OCD kind of behavior as well. So you've got to find that balance. Um, you know, if I was in bed and I could hear my 16-year-old making a cup of tea, and I would know that he probably wouldn't even be bothered to put the teaspoon in the dishwasher. I, because the dishwasher's on, I wouldn't get a bed and <laughs> go and put the teaspoon away. So I'm not that bad. But, you know, it's that funny, you know, kind of little message that, that can stay there, can't it? And yeah. it's interesting. Okay. So good tidying up conversation there. So... The next one is that my origami. See, Marie Kondo, Japanese, get it? <laughs> what will productive and uh, being productive and efficient do for you? So this one, you know, is a real interesting one because actually we don't have to be working in corporate jobs to be productive and efficient actually running a home we need a great deal of productivity and efficiency because we're juggling you know constantly uh, and often where we don't have a boss telling us what to do when we're at home because we actually are the boss uh, so we've got to figure it out we've got to figure it out to understand how we can well basically manage what we're doing and how we're doing it even when things kind of come in because they do quite a lot of the time unexpectedly um you know the phone will ring as you're trying to make the bolognese you know and whatever it you know it's how do we cope with all of these kind of outside influences um so it's it's kind of a bit like knowing how to have a flexible and structured system at the same time so it's that structured flexibility so if you're too structured then anything that comes in that's not expected and that's most of the time you know you're gonna you know fall apart because it wasn't planned for but then if you're overly flexible uh, then you can go off on a tangent and then forget what you were doing five minutes ago so it's just trying to find the balance between you know, structure and flexibility. So that will really enhance productivity and efficiency. And it will mean that you'll get through the day and you'll kind of look around and feel like you've got that dopamine kick. And dopamine is a, a chemical I talk about all the time. It's, it's that one where you kind of look around, and you go, I've done a good job. You know, I've, I've held it together. I've, I've been, you know, as good as I can be. And when you know that about yourself, you know, that's really lovely. That's reassuring. And it kind of gives you a, a self pat on the back, you know, and that's really nice. Because um, quite often as mums, we don't really get many pats on the back. <laughs> so we've got to create them ourselves, you know. And, um, and and I suppose the frustration might come because we might be looking for the pat on the back for maybe our partner or our children, and they're definitely not going to give us a pat on the back. And you know, and our partner might be too tired when they come home or whatever. You know, and it's 
it's about recognizing how can we do that for ourselves and that in itself is empowering uh, so we want to be able to create that feeling of I've done a good job I'm happy with what I've done it then helps you with your own self-value and your own self-worth and then ultimately self-esteem um, notice I didn't say confidence because I think confidence is something that we can all plaster on a bit like makeup um, but actually what I'm really in, interested in is building self-esteem which is coming from the inside and that's coming from the things that mean something to you and that are important to you and then you feel you know that you've grabbed that self-worth from those aspects whatever they may be so, yes, yeah. so have you got anything to say about this one, Jessica? Yeah. Um, well, this See you month nodding. is Productivity Month. Good. <laughs> We've got, um, is it Mike Bardi, who's sort of a legend in his own right coming in. Um, nice. So we'll be digging deep on productivity because, yeah, I love, I love a productivity chat. I was meant to have a sort of 20-minute discovery call with him a couple of weeks ago and it went on for over an hour and a half. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but you know people might think of that word as something that doesn't um feature in the home or in parenting oh no I've... you need it most that's where you need it most definitely. exactly and it's i'm i i refer to myself as a time management addict and mm. i love managing my time and a lot of people when they first meet me think that means filling up my time with things mm -hmm. we, we do but some of those things are sitting on the sofa with my two favorite people having cuddles that is still a thing that i'm doing and that still goes on my time calendar um but the big one where you were saying about having the flexibility in it and i get a lot of comments from usually the people throwing the disaster at me um going you've not reacted they sort of literally a barrage of thing whatever's happened and i'm like okay well, i can't change it <laughs> so how do I move forward I don't know the point what's the point of getting stressed about it if I can't change it mm -hmm. if getting stressed about it was going to change it then yeah I'll get stressed about it <laughs> yeah useful that doesn't usually have any impact so I'm just like no no so I, I and and this is where I love Google Calendar as opposed to there's so many you can get all these wonderful paper planners and things like that but I think particularly in mum life where you need to be reactive to constant changes a lot more than any other situation and um, digital for me is so much better and I this is coming from someone that loves stationery like, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm working on a line of stationery for super mum at the moment but it's very specific the products I will bring out um, if you've written it out and you've time blocked out or you've put in your diary what you're doing um, so say you put on your diary what you want to do that day, but you haven't given it certain times. You can find yourself going off on tangents or giving too much time to one task or not doing them in the right priority order. So for one, you need to be able to give them times. But if you then give them times and something comes in, so you get a call and you need to go and pick your child up from school because they're poorly. Mm. You've then got to physically cross those things out cross out something else, put it in in another place, move that thing around. Whereas Google Calendar, you, you can use your finger if you do it on your phone. Or you yeah. Can <laughs> drag the blocks other places. And that might mean that you drag that block to something else and overlap it while you're working out where the other thing's going to go. But it's so, so much easier. And also you can do it in color-coded. So mine's broken into different calendars. So I, I can look at it and go, there's not enough purple on this, which is my personal stuff. Nice. There's not enough purple. I need a bit more purple in my life. Or there's not enough yellow, which is my family time. Nice. So family day out or literally sitting on the sofa having cuddles. And yeah. So I need to do that. Um, so when people think I'm being a bit nuts about Google Calendar, I'm like, no, there's, there's a whole ball of why Google Calendar is awesome for mums. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but the interesting thing is, is I've, I use both. I've got paper and, you know, digital. And the interesting thing is everyone has their own preferences, don't they, of how they do time management. So some people might see a timeline going across this way. Some people might see a timeline going down linearly. Some people might see a timeline going forward. And that's just how they represent time and space in their brain. So everyone will 
you know, obviously the people who see it this way will do the similar types of things. People who see it that way will do similar types of things. So it depends on how you map out time and energy and space in your own world anyway. So, you know, if you know that about yourself as well, then you'll, you know, you will kind of understand which process works best for you mm-hmm. as well. So um, like for me, I've, I've, I'm still old fashioned. I've got an old fashioned file of that. <laughs> and um i've had it since i was 16 and i can't bear to get rid of it even though there's so many nice ones now we like flowers and things all over them and dots and stuff but you know i like to see it all in you know in front of me as well as my google calendar and i'm with you with the color code color coordination but when i i kind of feel like as well when i write something down uh it's a commitment in my head and if I type something out for me it doesn't feel like such a commitment and that's just my way so it's a strange interesting sort of difference really I do all my things like goals and uh, I'll do a review at the end of the year what habits I want to start yeah yeah and you'll probably write those down yeah that for me is different to scheduling yeah yeah yeah. that's not that for me isn't time management that is more planning your life Mm. things Mm. um and saying my weekly review you can see the books behind me this is my weekly review book and my monthly review book Mm. but my Mm. actual blocking out my time and to be able to to put in the things that i've worked out i want to do and need to do I'm I'm all I'm all digital. I just think it's the most productive. It's the most yeah and fast way to manage your time. Yeah, so you've figured it out. That's like you're the way you know because those things are a kind of constantly, potentially constantly changing, aren't they? So you don't want to be getting the tipex out every every five minutes. So you use things. So so often I find that if you if something then changes, you the thing that you've now need to move either you lose that and you suddenly realize that you haven't created the the powerpoint presentation for your talk yes <laughs> because the, the, chick, the kid got chicken pox and you deleted it from or you move past that page in your diary and you forgot to move it somewhere else yeah. or you then move it on to so you go okay well i'll move this thing on tipex that out and you move it to that and write that thing in and then you forget what it is you tipex out and you yeah. don't move that thing on to somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, gosh, this is like you know, it is it can be it can get quite technical, can't it? So, so you maybe that again, investing some time in thinking about what works for you. How do I increase my productivity? How do I be more efficient? And if you are the type of person that knows digital is the way forward don't mess about with the uh you know the the paper diary if you know that you're just going to lose it and you're not going to even look for it then you're spending three hours looking for the paper diary because you don't know what you're supposed to be doing that day that's not efficient so it's just about recognizing you know where your mind kind of gets that information as a snapshot and how you can kind of then actually turn it into practical action because that's really what we're looking for really isn't it it's like the 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 ticking things off and once things are ticked off you've already again got another dopamine I've done it success you know motivation and that will continue to kind of lead on to the next thing that you tick off so you'll always kind of be getting your own energy as well it's almost like the brain is a dynamo so it's using energy constantly but then when you're doing it in the right way it's making energy for you so that's the way I like to see it is like when you are productive and efficient or when you learn how to be then your productivity and efficiency increases so it's just one of those win-win situations really so good okay so now this is a really important question so everything that you've written down on your notepad the whys so you know why is relaxation and calm and tidy and efficiency important to you why so what does that represent to you hopefully you'll be saying things like well I will be happier 
or you know um, I will feel more in control those types of things and you know those are the those that's actually the goal of what we want to achieve in life you know nobody gets to life and goes you know what no one gets to motherhood and goes yeah but okay I've just signed up for 16 years of stress panic anger you know like no we you know just because maybe you've seen that happen in other people's lives or families or in your life as a child whatever it doesn't mean that we need to repeat these behaviors at all it means that we can understand that those behaviors were how they were and that's okay but we can learn new strategies and you know sometimes what we learn from our own parents is not just what to do but also what not to do <laughs> so you know that's a really important message as well so it's just about recognizing that you know why is it important to you to be actually be calm and actually be relaxed and live in an environment that you're proud of and you know um comfortable in and why is this important message to you giving this to your children you know because that's really what you're doing you're whatever you're doing in life you're teaching your children by what you're doing and by how you are being you know not just but what you're saying um i saw in a supermarket a few weeks ago as i was coming out there was a little girl in the trolley and she was shouting and the mum was shouting at the child do not shout at me <laughs> so <laughs> Excuse me. So that, not your brother, smack. Yeah. So there's a mixed message already there being kind of ingrained in. Uh, so my parent is telling me not to shout. My parent knows what to do. They're now shouting. Mm -hmm. They think it's okay. I'm not allowed to do it. Uh, uh, you know, so it's it, it, even as a two, three-year-old, that's coded in as confusion already, you know. So we've really got to figure out how we can backtrack. And again, you you know, people will go, oh, it's all right for you to say your teenagers sleep until like two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> you don't have to get up at five or four or whatever it is, or you don't have to feed them all the way through the night and whatever it is. But actually, if you learn how, going back to the investment of learning, if you learn how to stay calm and relaxed, and it is a skill, then you will also learn how to sleep more efficiently as well. So you can actually go to sleep and wake up again when you need to, but you're going to get the quality of sleep. So you're going to feel energized. You're not going to feel completely worn out and battered every morning you're actually going to be charging up at night even if you don't get you know the full eight hours you might only get three and a half but that is going to be quality because your subconscious wants you to be efficient it wants you to be happy um and you know obviously i'm a hypnotherapist so i talk about the subconscious a lot um but a lot of people don't understand that the subconscious mind is really there for us to tap into. And when we know how to do that, that creates so much change and, you know, um, benefit, you know, for your life. So that's, so that's important for you to, to kind of figure out what, what would it do for you? Why is all of this important to you? If you've got it all right, what would that do for you? You know, so it's just about figuring that out yourself. Um, and I just love this picture. It's, I feel like it just gives you freedom. It gives you wings. You know, you, you literally learn to, to kind of rise <laughs> above all of that stuff that sometimes can pull us down and make us feel like we can't do things or we haven't got the skills or we're not worthy enough you know all of that stuff so it's just about finding out how you can rise above it all and just to sort of feel as if you actually are in control so that's that one okay so now this is my favorite i said we were going to talk about the word selfish now i hear this word a lot <laughs> I was an only child so when I was younger I heard this word a lot I was always told that I was selfish or I was spoiled and um, 
I had to do a lot of work on the word for myself because I didn't want to feel that I was, um, well, I did, I just knew that I wasn't intending to be selfish. Maybe my actions might look like they are being selfish. So I had to just sort of do a lot of work on that word. So this is how I reframed the word selfish from a negative to a positive. So in Sanskrit, so um, my my background is my parents are Hindi, Hindus, so uh, they they spoke in Hindi and Sanskrit. Um, and in Sanskrit, my the word for ish is God, actually God. Um, so if you're not religious, God might mean something else to you. So I'm not. Uh, actually religious but I'm spiritual so for me uh, when I hear the word God I just sort of flip it into the goodness within me Mm -hmm. or the goddess within me so that's kind of how I see it for myself so if ish means goddess or goodness then self ish means to have that goodness or that goddess within you. So if you are selfish, you are looking after yourself, you are attending to self-care, you are valuing yourself, you have self-worth. And that means all of that means you're honoring the goddess within you. And it goes back to that lovely idea of the the, uh, oxygen mask uh when you're in an airplane and you know they say if anything bad happens the oxygen mask will come down but make sure you put your one on first before helping others you know and that oxygen mask metaphor is well if you don't put yours on and you're trying to get your kids one on and then you can't get yours on well how's your kid gonna be okay if they don't have a mummy anymore you know and that's that's really from an empty cup no, you can't. No, you can't. That, am I gonna? Oh, look at that! It's on the front of the pile as well. There we go. A little in the, if it's mirror image to the audience, or you can actually see that, but it's a little postcard. It says, "You can't serve from empty. Can't serve from an empty cup." Self care in motherhood is an essential survival skill. Really so, is. It really that's is. Smart. New, that's from our new stationery line. I love that. It's <laughs> gorgeous. And put that on your fridge, you know, and it is that idea, isn't it? Just re- read that statement and absorb it, understand it for yourself. What does it mean to you? So all these affirmations and things, you know, some of them might not mean anything to you, but find the one that does, you know, and it's, it's about... It's about connecting with those words and applying those words into your everyday living reality. You know, lots of people I see just go, oh yeah, I've got a bookshelf full of, you know, (laughs) self-help books. But then they come to me with anxiety and I'm like, well, you clearly read them, but you didn't absorb them and you didn't act on them. Because if you would have done, then you wouldn't be sitting in front of me now, you know. So it's not about just having the books or reading the books and then just like sticking it on the shelf. It's about how do I apply this stuff? You know, how can I bring this into my world? Even if it's a very small thing every day, yeah. it's just knowing how to do that and, and understanding the value of why you're doing that. So if we can take away the word selfish from a negative context and move it into something that's sort of much more honorable, then we can really start to see the goodness within us and recognize that we actually do come first. Yeah. We come first. I know that's a hard thing to hear for mums, but if the mummy is not okay, the child is not okay. Um, and I genuinely think, you know, get your selfishness out now. <laughs> you, know? you find that you, you, you own a little bit of selfishness and everything underneath improves you take a little bit of selfish time and your connection with your kids improves the connection with your partner improves yeah improves for years i was so worried about being selfish that i actually probably spent a lot of the time being the bad side of selfish because i never did the good side of it and when i finally thought well sod this and let go and so i'm just gonna live for me now and this was pretty having a little one I'm just going to just going to live for me now and obviously the journey with my mum being sick changed mm. everything for me. Um and I was like life's too short going to be selfish and things. 
I was probably my the best version of selfish. I filled me up and suddenly I had all this stuff to give. Yeah. All this, this energy and enjoyment. And now people are like, you're not a selfish person. And I'm like, that's because I do it in private. <laughs> yes. Secretly selfish. <laughs> Secretly selfish. <laughs> and it's, it is, it's having those, those things that for me are fairly big deal breakers. I, I have my weekly bath. I have a bath. Mm. I do wash. <laughs> I, make this clear. I only wash on one occasion. Outside of this bath time. Um, so I have a weekly bath and face mask that I do. That's my weekly treat. I have my t- five to ten minutes of meditation every day. That's my daily treat. And then I have a monthly treat of a monthly massage, which someone that do as, as much, I do a lot of heavy lifting, like literally in the gym, heavy lifting, not just my child. Mm. Um, mm. So for someone that does a lot of heavy lifting, my body needs it. Um, my really needs it. But even if I stopped heavy lifting, I'd still do it. Um, yeah it's I've, nice yeah, I've got a daily weekly and a monthly ritual that's mine um, and it's that bit of time and that bit of selfishness um, but such a better person for it so yeah. everyone heard of it yeah and you give yourself permission as well and it's not something that you're doing because you don't feel well so you just need to do this because you, do, you know it's not it's not pampering. It's necessary. Mm-hmm. It's necessary. It's not, it isn't something that is extravagant. It's not, you know, we need to ex, ex or delete those words out of our head. Mm-hmm. It's necessary. Self care is necessary. Um, and you know, we've probably in society, in the society we live in at the moment, we've probably been, um, hearing that, it isn't necessary and actually it is we know that so we know that because you know there's so much mental health issues going on and you know there's so much depression anxiety in the world today and it's you know it's it's just really sad because if we took the time out for ourselves recognize that it isn't like you say it's a difference between right that's it I'm going to be selfish because I can. It's a different energy, isn't it? Sort of, so take the good selfishness and it, well, I suppose we could change it to self care, but I wanted to talk about the word selfish as well, because people might often confuse uh, the with self care, you know? So if you can even transfer the word selfish to mean something positive to you, you can see it in a good way. And it, it's something then you will prioritize, won't you? Mm-hmm. And your kids will learn from that too. They will learn that they matter. You know, they matter because you matter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> good. So, um, yeah. And that's just my last little slide that says if you, you know, if there's anything I can do for you or anything you have heard that you might want to know about, even if it's hypnotherapy or anything like that, I, I do very short free consultations to find out, first of all, whether what I do is a good fit for you anyway, because it might not be. Um, so if you're, you know, if you want to do that, then just send me an email. That's that. And where's best to find you on social media if people want to come and stalk you? Stalk me. (laughs) So um, I have two websites. Uh, My local website is where I'm based in the Cotswolds and I have a private practice here. Uh, So if you're anywhere around the Cotswolds, um, that will be Mm thecotswoldpractice.com. Uh, my international global website, which is where I see clients uh, all around the world and also all around the country. Uh, and also I have um, so lots of, uh, like like you've got a YouTube channel, I've got my YouTube channel on there and all my kind of uh, online content and workshops and all of that stuff. That's all on my names. That's dictatate.com. And then on Twitter, I'm dip at dipnotherapy. Mm-hmm. That's it, I think. Oh well, I'll link I'll link everything down below when this goes up on the YouTube channel. This will all be linked in the description. And um, if you're finding this anywhere else, so if you found the audio on the podcast or whatever, it'll be in the show notes. All the things, all the places, all those such things. And um, any questions? Um, oh, so let me just 
get rid of a uh, screen share so are you still seeing my screen yes okay now I just have to figure out how to undo that I don't know right let's work this out how do I there we go now all I've got is you okay perfect maybe too big how do I get rid of me there we go um I think so any questions pop them into the chat box um, but no that was brilliant it's I, I, yeah, I bleat on a lot about not bleat on a lot because keep needing to get the message through <laughs> like refilling this cup and taking a bit of time out for you and things like that and um yeah it makes a massive difference to how we which i and again i try now do the same for my partner and mm. not at the expense of my self-care yes exactly <laughs> i will after that i will uh because if mama ain't happy ain't no one happy um so after i'm refilled then i make sure that the things i know that are important for him are um one of them particularly benefits me which is he likes to do the cooking on sunday night um, nice that's a good, good one <laughs> very good cook, which is always a bonus that's um, really good but we uh we have a, a like a fixed set menu for the rest of the week but sunday night we find a recipe and that's one of his things to be to stay calm and relaxed is to hunt down a recipe that he wants to cook and he likes to go and have his pot around the shops and get the bits for it and things and that is a relaxation exercise for him um and lovely like, um saturday morning um i always make sure between sort of eight and ten that i'm about to have a little one um so that he can do a gym session because that sort of sets him up to have a calm weekend because his work is particularly stressful and busy um so, so, so nice you've both got a really lovely vibe going on where you both understand each other's needs and you know and, and support each other as well it's so nice it is it is good teamwork um and mm. it's something i wish i could do for more of like clients and the people i work with is go and take like a saucepan to their partner's head yeah <laughs> in a metaphorical <laughs> way obviously i am not advocating that um, and get them to realize that actually if you can get this this teamwork and this to and fro between you everyone benefits mm. um and you see, but oh, I need some da one part will say, oh, I need some downtime, and we'll disappear off to the pub with his mates. Or well, say he, I'm going to pretend it's the guy in this situation. Just mm -hmm. pub with his mates every Friday, but then because he's so stressed, but then come back and have to deal with a very upset partner for the whole weekend, yes. which is much more stressful than if they we had a better teamwork dynamic than that. And exactly with a hangover in tow as well. So that can be like, yeah, that can drive mm -hmm. me a little bit nuts. It's like, you kind of want to bash some people's heads together um, and be like, you know, you went in as a team, you're doing this as a team, which mm -hmm. is where some, some women go, well, actually this team doesn't work for me and I'd rather be in a team on my own and that works mm. and, and it's completely understandable. Some of yeah, stuff. everyone's situation really is so, <laughs> so unique though, isn't it? And um, yeah, so in, like when I, the two, the, the two boys were small when my ex-husband was on night shift um, so he didn't really see them well he was working at all because obviously at night he'd go up to work and then in the day he would be sleeping and I'd be out um, so it had to and then but he would have like six days or five or six days on the trot off and the interesting thing is the beginning of that was knackered the end was preparing to go back to work so really mm. there wasn't really much left so I did feel a bit like I was doing this pretty much you know on my own although he would not like it if he heard me say that let's hope he's not a fan of yours <laughs> oh, our other halves would never like half the stuff we say about <laughs> no but this is my ex-husband so <laughs> so um yeah so it's interesting how you know we 
we can really learn from the negatives that happen in our lives as well because actually we have to find some resources then don't we to cope and to manage and I thank that situation now because actually that's where I became so efficient and so productive and so resourceful um it I maybe wouldn't have done if I had it so, you know, I had it easier, but that's just the way I learned. My dad used to say to me, you always learn the hard way, Dipti. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been, it's been brilliant. There's, there's always so much to talk about. <laughs> no, it just goes on. But thank you for asking me. It's been a pleasure. My normal sign off, as always, um, I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood. And remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Good night, everyone. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again. <laughs>